Hey guys, how are you? David DeFranco here from DavidDeFranco.com with the return of Geek Updates. I cannot tell you how excited I am for this. Now, for those who have not been watching me for a while, I used to do an update series just like this called Geek Update, which, by the way, I thought about renaming to David's Thoughts, but no, I want to keep the original classic brand name there. So anyway, Geek Update was basically a series where I would just do this. I would sit down and talk to you guys about things that I find interesting, from video games to what I'm playing at the time, to movies I recently watched, to new website ideas of mine, or just life updates in general about the upcoming holidays. That's what it is. There's no real system. There's no fancy audio lights or whatever. It's me at the desk, chilling and killing and having fun. Seriously though, let's jump into it. So I have three things to talk about in today's Geek Updates, and well, that's just about that. The first topic is Geek Updates are back. You guys have been talking about this for a while now, especially my classic viewers. I mean, Geek Updates, in my opinion, are kind of what defined me as a person in terms of content creation and being who I am on YouTube, so I'm really, really glad to bring it back. It's going to be a very similar format as I hit the mic. I gotta get used to this, where I just talk about things, and then finally, I'm gonna wrap up the video with an app that I think you guys should check out. Now, in the past, I used to talk about music that I think you should, well, check out. For instance, the Sims soundtrack, Halo soundtrack, or even music that I liked in past iPod commercials. Yes, it's been quite a while, but instead, I think it's a lot more interesting nowadays to talk about apps that I can personally recommend that I think you should check out as well. First of all, let me hide Twitter. This is very distracting, things just keep scrolling. Okay, so anyway, my Geek Update series intros or whatever won't normally be this long. This is just me welcoming everyone back, and well, I hope you enjoy it. And yes, I will be fixing up the background in the near future. This is kind of like a test run to see what you guys think. Okay, so the first real topic of this Geek Update is Halo 5. Guys, let's talk about Halo 5. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Not a sponsor, but I wish, but not really. Seriously, let's talk about Halo 5. Now, I'm going to glance over here to my notes so I don't miss anything. Actually, let me move this so I can just put the notes out right under the webcam so it's not too obvious. So, these are the notes that I put down while I was under the Halo 5 embargo. In other words, I couldn't really talk about it too much. So, Halo 5, in my opinion, felt very similar to Halo 4 because of the overall feel and the visual style. They had those futuristic weapons with the neon lights and fancy lighting, so it was overall a great experience. But guys, 343 Industries is still blowing my mind today because they have done a major upgrade in the sound department. Halo has always sounded good, but after playing games like Battlefield and Call of Duty or whatever, you sometimes wish, like, why can't Halo weapons sound as good as this? Well, good news, we have finally made it because, in my opinion, the sound effects in Halo 5 are the best sound effects yet in Halo history. The battle rifle sounds incredible. The SMG is so freaking satisfying. The sniper rifle finally sounds like a sniper rifle. Rocket launcher? I mean, I gotta say, I kinda miss the classic rocket launcher sound, but this new one is not bad at all. Just overall, the sound department is great, and of course, as usual, the music is incredible. And by the way, if you play Breakout and you happen to have a surround sound system like I do, crank that volume, go off that first jump, throwy thing, whatever it's called, a thruster, so much bass. My house just shakes from the amount of bass that it outputs. It's just incredible, and I love it. All right, so what else? So in terms of the campaign, let's back up a bit. I'm getting ahead of myself with multiplayer. The campaign, I gotta say, was good. It wasn't incredibly amazing. I've played better, but for what it was, it was pretty damn good. I beat it in about 10 or 12 hours, um, but I will say it felt like ODST, where you're not playing as Master Chief the whole time. I mean, at least you got to play as Master Chief in maybe three or four missions. But that's the thing. I would have liked a lot more Master Chief missions and kind of balancing out the blue team and whatever. But you know what? You can't have everything. Uh, but for what it was, the game was awesome and I definitely enjoyed it very much. And I will likely be going through it again to find the skulls because I have yet to find one skull. But can you blame me? I've been putting most of my time into the multiplayer. So the ending. I'm not going to go into detail. 
Well, because one, I don't really care about the Halo storyline too much, to be honest. I'm more into the multiplayer and just the Halo brand overall. But I will say this, the ending was okay. It felt kind of abrupt. I mean, it happened really quickly, and it didn't feel like an ending. Uh, but I will say the second half of the game was definitely better than the first half, especially one part where you're going down this big-ass building. That was freaking awesome. So, I just enjoyed that part very much. So, anyway, getting back into the multiplayer, let's talk about that, because let's face it. Multiplayer is primarily the reason most Halo players buy Halo to begin with, right? I mean, it's been a staple in the gaming industry since the first Halo. I will never forget the hours upon hours I spent with friends on Blood Gulch and just having fun with Warthogs, trying to get them flipped over the mountains, exploiting glitches. It was just overall a great time. Okay, so Halo 5 multiplayer, personally, I think it's a lot better than Halo 4 multiplayer. I loved Halo 1, 2, 3, and Reach. I'm not even gonna say ODST because that's technically previous games, it's mashed into one. But Halo 3 and Reach are to this day my favorite. I mean, Halo 2 was my first real online Halo game, as it was for you, I'm sure. Except for if you used Xbox Connect on the original Xbox and the first Halo game. Good times, but a lot of connection issues. But uh, anyway, Halo 3 was really cool because that whole bubble shield thing, I really, really enjoyed the bubble shield and the power-ups and the grav lifts or whatever. And Forge. Forge was just awesome. Then Halo Reach, I really enjoyed. A lot of people hated it, but I personally loved it. Then there was Halo 4, which they changed a lot of things. And guys, believe me, I am all for change. I don't mind adapting the change. But Halo 4 felt way, way too different from the previous Halo games, at least in terms of the multiplayer. It just didn't feel like a Halo game. I mean, yeah, it was still fun, but I didn't put nearly as much time into that as I did previous Halo games. Um, but now I am glad to say Halo 5 has that classic Halo vibe, but it has some elements from Halo 4 that make sense. For instance, you can boost, which is really cool. The ground stomp is just kick-ass. I freaking love that. And by the way, I got a double kill with my ground stomp the other night. That right there is just a good feeling. So yes, overall, the multiplayer experience is very positive. I will say the maps do feel better over time, but as of right now, they're okay. I mean, at least the mid-sized maps. They're not as outdoorsy and naturey as past Halo games, if that makes sense. But I'm really hoping we get bigger and better maps when they come out with the big team battle playlists. Uh, because honestly, I haven't played a single multiplayer match that uses vehicles yet, except for Warzone. Sorry, I'm not enjoying Warzone. In my opinion, it's just very boring and the maps are a little too big. But that's just me. I'm more of a team arena person with, uh, you know, Slayer. CTF, oh, Strongholds, that's a lot of fun, but guys, oh my god, here we go. Breakout. Breakout is the best multiplayer mode to be introduced to the Halo series in years. Breakout is insane. It's essentially a combination of like Last Man Standing, Search and Destroy, SWAT, and One Flag CTF. I'm not going to go into details, just Google, or YouTube rather, a video of it, and believe me, you have to play to realize how awesome it truly is. It encourages strategy, teamwork, and just taking your time. It really is that much fun. And they custom designed several maps for that mode alone. So it's not like they got lazy and just threw Breakout into Fathom or Regret maps or whatever. These are custom made maps for Breakout. And I am just loving it very much. So moving on, customization of your Spartan isn't insane, but it is fun and it feels more in depth than past Halo games. But as far as I can see so far, um, the customization is purely cosmetic. It doesn't really change anything like it does in Destiny. I mean, that's not totally a bad thing because the customization certainly feels better than Halo 4, but I would have liked some kind of customization system like in uh, Destiny. So I just check an email getting stuff on my watch. And finally, regarding Halo 5, I cannot wait for Forge. It kind of sucks that it's not there from day one, but in a way that's kind of a good thing because who knows, by the time December comes around, I could be bored with Halo 5 multiplayer because by then I'll be playing Black Ops 3 and GTA 5 and trying to balance my time between all those games. So Forge, in my eyes, could breathe some life back into the Halo 5 multiplayer experience. And guys, I cannot express this enough. Look at me. I love Forge. 
as a content creator, it just feels cool as hell creating your own custom maps and sharing them with the world. And believe me, I already have some ideas brewing up here in this head of mine. So if you want to add me on um, Xbox Live, my gamer tag is Blurred Pixels. I will link that right below. Not link, but I'll list it right below in case you're curious. Okay. Wow, I definitely... Holy shit. 11 minutes already? Okay, I talked about Halo 5 enough. All right, the next... <laughs> oh, God. The next topic is changes in my setup. Now, I've... You know, hold on. I have teased this in past videos, and this isn't final yet, but I'm pretty sure it's going to happen sooner rather than later because I've had to be very patient with this. But let's just say I'm getting a 4K monitor. Yes, a 4K monitor, a 32-inch one at that for my desk. I'm looking to simplify this setup going from triple 27-inch ASUS displays to a single 32-inch BenQ 4K display. Now, this BenQ display is not just a 4K TV. This is specifically created and designed for desktop usage. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for a 4K TV on your desk, just don't. Don't do that. TVs are meant to be in your living room, your bedroom, whatever. But if you want a 4K monitor, go for an actual 4K computer monitor. So I'm definitely looking forward to that very much. And who knows if I do get that 4K monitor, and that's a small if because it sounds like it's a pretty sure deal. If I do get that 4K monitor, I'm not looking to only simplify my setup, but I'm also looking into an actual speaker system. Um, I'm looking into the audio engine, I think A5 Plus self-powered speakers. So yes, I would actually have like real speakers, not some Logitech computer speaker system, which there's nothing wrong with my current system, but I'm looking for a bigger sound and I'm looking for bigger speakers and just a better experience overall. Now, what will happen to the, my ASUS displays, because believe me, I love this setup, and who knows, maybe I won't end up liking the 4K display as much as I want to, and I could go back to this setup in a matter of a week or two. About a week now, David. Seriously though, these three ASUS displays will still be put to use. It's not like I'm going to be putting them in my, in my basement or whatever, because I love these displays. They are easily the best displays I've ever had in my life, and I just love them that much. So, in my eyes, two of these would go to a brand new setup that's completely dedicated to streaming on Twitch and YouTube gaming with a PlayStation 4 and an Xbox One. Notice I said N, not my, because I'm hoping to get both of those consoles separately, either through sponsorship deals or I'll buy them over time because Christmas is coming up and that's a very expensive time of year, so I'm going to have to be careful with my spending. But I'm keeping my options open, so we'll see. So long story short, yes, I'm looking to uh, create a dedicated streaming setup because, look, I now have the room for it, so why not? And yes, I tried the whole gaming thing on YouTube a while ago and actually a couple times, and I just couldn't get into it. But now that YouTube gaming is a thing and Twitch and whatever, I could stream, then export the files, then do my own editing, fade in and fade out, and boom. I don't have to worry about getting a fancy headset or whatever, a, a capture card or all, all that stuff. Those days are behind me. And nowadays, it's a lot easier to stream and capture your gameplay. So I figured, why not make a dedicated streaming setup instead of having to do it in my living room? So we'll see. That right there is a big if because not only is it very expensive, but it also comes down to what I'm going to have to get for that setup to work, like a brand new desk, brand new speakers, and all that stuff. So we'll see. However, the third ASUS display, I'm pretty much sold on this idea, the third ASUS display would go into my bedroom on my old Apple TV because my new Apple TV will be here by the time this video is out. And yeah, so one of those ASUS displays will be dedicated to my Apple TV in my bedroom because, you know me, I like to watch Netflix when I go to bed or YouTube videos or whatever. So why not attach my old Apple TV to one of these displays? I mean. It's not like I want to put that Apple TV in the basement, just have it, you know, collect dust, because I love that Apple TV. It's the best Apple TV Apple's ever come out with, but this new one just looks incredible. So obviously the new Apple TV will take the place of my old Apple TV in my living room. So, whoo, damn, David, you know how to talk. You really, really know how to talk. So guys, there you go. There's my second update. And now my third and final one is today's app pick, and that is Guitar Hero Live on iOS. And I gotta say, it's pretty damn cool for being a touchscreen game. 
Okay, so this game is exactly what you'd expect. It's Guitar Hero on your phone. Now, it's not nearly as engaging and satisfying as the actual Guitar Hero series. Like, you know, the physical guitar and whatever, because believe me, I've had my good times with that game. Or games, rather. Actually, I've only owned one Guitar Hero game in the past, and that was Guitar Hero 3 Legends of Rock. Man, I put many, many hours into that game on 360. But Guitar Hero Live on your phone is pretty damn cool, and it's free. As you can see right there, you have to unlock the final version. But the trial, I believe, gives you two songs, one on live and the other on TV. Look at that timing with the finger. Awesome. So guys, if you want to check that out, that is linked right below in the um, iOS app store. Heavy emphasis on iOS because I don't think it's out for Android yet. I could be wrong. I mean, I hope it's out for Android because I want as many people to experience this as possible. But I did some Googling before recording this and I couldn't find it. So I do think it's iOS only. But hey, it's free. So check it out. Why not? And now for these Geek Update videos, I figured I'm going to work in my feature points URL because if you do want to unlock Guitar Hero in terms of the full version, you can unlock it for completely free by using feature points. Okay, so for those who don't know what feature points is, it's a referral system where you can download apps for free, earn points, and then finally use those points towards downloading paid apps for completely free. But in my opinion, you should just save up your points to get Amazon gift cards, iTunes gift cards, and the list goes on and on. And actually, that's how I got my Xbox One for completely free, you know, besides tax or whatever through uh, Amazon. But yes, I pretty much got my Xbox One for free a couple years ago by using Future Points. Yes, that is the truth. I love Future Points that much. And no, they're not paying me to do this. I've been talking about Future Points for completely free for a while now. I just enjoy it that much. And I think you guys should check it out too. So check out Future Points using my link right below. I really appreciate it. And then share your link with your friends to earn points towards, again, paid apps for free, Amazon gift cards, iTunes gift cards, and the list goes on and on. It really is very cool. Okay, damn, that was a long geek update. Now, future geek updates probably won't be this long. This is only because I had a lot to talk about in terms of Halo 5 and my setup. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts right below. And I promise this production will get a little fancier despite what I said earlier about lighting and audio or whatever because I definitely want to get a better microphone. I mean, my snowball mic right here is kind of turning into yellow snow. And eventually I want to check out the Yeti mic, which just happens to be made by Blue Microphone. So it's not like I would be leaving the Blue brand because I really enjoy my uh, snowball. But I'm just, I'm just looking for something a little fancier. Anyway, guys, again, let me know your thoughts on this geek update. This isn't meant to be anything fancy. This is just me talking at my desk and just rambling about things that I find interesting, and hopefully you'll find it interesting as well. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for your support. I really genuinely do hope you enjoyed this video. This is fun to me. This is seriously fun, me just being myself and just talking about whatever. Anyway, you guys enjoy the rest of your week, and I will see you in my next video. Peace.